Hello there, um, I'm Chris Park, the lead developer of Shattered Haven, and uh, this time what I want to show you is the level editor for the game. Uh, this is the same level editor that we uh, made the game with, and uh, so let's dive in. Um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new level, uh, rather than editing an existing level, and so it gives me the list of all the numbers up to 500 that I have not already filled in. Now you can create your own adventures, so uh, you know, you can have 500 per adventure, and that is a lot. You know, that's plenty. You can have up to 26 screens per level as well, so that's that's plenty for anybody. You know, 512k is enough for if 640k is enough for anybody. How's the quote go? Ha ha ha. All right, so it can't find level 84, so a blank one's been created with the default settings from the level I was just coming from. Um, that is fine. This one is going to be a boss for the marsh. Um, so, Ivan Wood Marsh Boss, and I'll save that. So then I can hit the load screen here if I wanted to, and scroll down. And here's my Ivan Wood Boss Marsh, and it's got a little screenshot of it. And you can see all the different sublevels there. Right now, I just have the main one. Um, okay, uh, this is going to be a single screen level. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to set the background. Um, I'm going to set this to some sort of dirt. I'm going to go with kind of a dark mud. Now I'm going to get more of a kind of unhappy grass here to go on the second layer. And now I'm going to go over here under common flags and I can lay that on top. Now I can make something that's nice and a bit organic by doing this and just drag it around. And I just realized you couldn't see my mouse, but now you should be able to. Okay. So we've got a little bit of something here. I feel like Bob Ross. <laughs> Alrighty. Let's put in some pits. This is going to have eyeball snakes in it, which are a monster that we haven't put anywhere else in the game yet. And um, these do pathfinding between the various pits. And so having a number of pits makes them a little more unpredictable. So now I'm going to, the background objects have, you know, things like walls and pits and other stuff like that. The foreground objects have things that are actually able to move. Um, or otherwise be particularly interacted with. So, oh, there we go. Meso creatures. Let's see. Let's have two snakes of nine in length. So in order to actually test this, well, I'll show you. If I hit test one player male, notice I come in here. Ivanwood Marsh Boss, sure. Hey, there's no guy. I can't do anything. What's going on? Right. So what I have to do is I have to, have to actually put the players in there. So player one, uh, I'll put him here. And player two, put him her here. Um, you can put them wherever you want. So you actually make them separated. Um, this is where they'll start the level if they've warped in via a portal. If they've warped in, if they've walked in from an adjacent screen, even from another level, then it'll appear um, on the edge that they walked in from. So um, that varies. Alright, so now I actually have a guy. I can walk around. You can see what the eyeball snakes do. So you can see their behaviors are automatically um, going to these particular uh, pits. So the arrangement of the pits really kind of changes the tempo of the boss fight a bit. Alrighty. Well, that's kind of interesting. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put some more pits, though, because then we'll make them really unpredictable. Not that close. Um, let's make this sort of a more difficult fight for the players. And where the heck are they going to come out? Of course, we're going to have to go in here to actually fight these guys. So, all right, still a very boring level. So. Let's put in some trees and some other things like that. This is a swampy sort of level, so let's put in some weeping willows. I can kind of drag these in here. Suddenly we're getting a little more definition to this level. And I'm bringing them into the pit some so that I actually create some extra barriers for the uh, 
um, snakes, which is interesting. To tell you the truth, I don't even remember how the AI for the snakes will handle that. Hopefully, well. <laughs> Interesting. Alrighty. Well, if I wanted to do that, the snake AI would have to be adjusted. So what I'm going to do is shift these a little bit there. Because that was making the snakes kind of drift sideways. Since I'm also the, you know, programmer of this, I certainly can adjust the snake AI, but I don't want to do that while we're in the middle of this video. All right, so that's seeing the snakes act more sensibly. Whoopsies. This is going to be a hard level just because of the holes. All righty. So we've got the snakes and so on doing some various stuff there. Um, <clears throat> this is still, this could be more interesting. So what I'm going to do is let's put down a, let's make ourselves a little shack up here. So I'm going to put we'll say this is going to be the floor. Right now I'm leaving it as this kind of concrete, um, but we might kind of change that. And I'm going to get rid of that pit and these trees and maybe these and kind of, well, there's not going to be room there. Okay. And then I'm going to make, look for some walls here. So let's find a wall that makes sense. So how about this brick wall dark? There's a lot of various types of walls. So put that in like this, and add one looks one last piece there. Put in some ceilings, so then this makes a lot more visual sense. Suddenly it's slightly 3D. Now I'm going to put in a roof. Um, let's see. Let's make this look kind of old and decrepit. So what I'm going to do is lay down a base, and then let's start making it look patchy. So. This is an old, decrepit roof, and maybe a couple of these things. It's a really bad roof. Okay, now I'm going to put in some invisible roofs right here. And that's important because as soon as you step on an invisible roof, like in this doorway here, um, you are able to see inside the roof. I'll show you how this works. All right, so I'm going to make my way over to the other side from here. Ah, there we go. So I can see that uh, I can see inside as soon as I step there. If the invisible roof was not there, I would not be able to do that. So now let's place some weapons in there. Um, well, you know what? It would be interesting to use the handguns in a boss fight. We've never used the handguns in an actual level. We've only used them in the overworld before. So let's do that. Um, Let's put handguns, but no bullets. We'll use scripting to get bullets. That'll be fun. Um, okay, now, your common flags here. Let's put some weeds around to make this look, or grass, we'll do transparent grass, to make this look a little bit more organic here, too. This is just an aesthetics thing that doesn't really affect anything, but I like doing that because it really makes it a lot more modern looking, a lot less, you know, standard blocky. It's hard to see it right now because all the little flags, but the little flags are useful for being able to tell where I've put um, what layers, because sometimes you can't tell. So now I can see, okay, this looks a lot more marshy. Um, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to put in some, let's see, under plants here, I'm going to put in some Put in some low bushes here. These kind of slow down the player. Well, you know what? That's that's overkill. We'll put some here just for being scenic, and that's it. Um, and again, just for being scenic, let's put in some kind of swampy water over here where the players are, and we'll even put some deep water here. Uh, you notice I can right click, or I can middle click, or shift click, either one, and I um, automatically pick up 
whatever the tile is that I'm over, which is pretty handy. All right, so now we've got that. And, you know, I can come and get the handguns and, you know, shoot the snakes, but I can't actually uh, kill them because they only have one bullet per handgun. So that's not going to be very successful. So what I'm going to do is make it so that um, some bullets just kind of appear out here every so often. So now I went in, I'm scripting. Um, I'm going to call this script bullet 392 so that I can tell what tile I'm going to be working on. That's 392 there. So this is going to be a repeat when finished script. I'm going to check the, my syntax there. Repeat when finished, yeah. So you've got this whole scripting library here. It's got lots and lots of commands. There's conditions, there's commands, there's all sorts of stuff you can do. Um, lots to discover. Okay, repeat and finished. I'm going to have a weight of 2,000 on this. This weight, 2,000 milliseconds, so two seconds. Um, and then I'm going to say FG add, um, and I need to know what it actually is called here. So it's called small caliber bullet pickup. Okay. Um, whoopsies. Bullet. Well, we'll do bullet 454 at this point. So repeats when finished. Don't do what I just did and click without saving. Um, code FG add 454 small small caliber bullets pickup. Okay, so I just realized what I did, which is I use the home and the end keys when I am typing. And uh, I had the home key bound to um, my video turn on, turn off in fraps. So I wound up finishing the scripting without actually uh, realizing that I had turned that off for you. So um, you can see the ones that I've created here, bullet 308, and the others are all just copies of this. I have repeat when finished, allows normal gameplay, which allows, uh, instead of it being like a fixed cutscene where uh, you can't act until the characters have all moved around and talked and stuff, you actually get to play while it's there. Um, so these all have different weights at the start and the end, so they're nice and asynchronous as to when they actually show up. And uh, I've scattered them around. Uh, each numbered one there corresponds to a particular tile on the screen. So 308, 343, 454, 462, you know, they're scattered around. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, here again, I middle click to select the pits. Um, I'm going to make it so that, well, maybe not with pits. I need to do something to make it so the player can't just run off to the side. Um, this is a swamp. These are all the dangerous options I have here. This is a swamp, so poison mushrooms actually make sense. These things are deadly, and the player, well, they're not deadly. They're, they're poisonous. They hurt you. We don't want the player to, the player doesn't want to knock into these. So we'll place some of these around, eh, not there, that's a little mean. We'll place some of these around to kind of ring the player in a little bit more. Um, really make them, you know, feel a little more trapped. Um, and we'll put some more up here just so that it's, you know, aesthetically makes sense. It doesn't look just like a ring. It actually looks like it's part of the level design um, and I don't want the snakes going around these so um, okay there's no direct line of sights that intersect these I'm gonna be mean down here and prevent the players from getting down there either all right now I'm gonna be super mean maybe and put in some spikes. Let's see. Eh, those are hard to see. And against the swamp backdrop, I'm not going to do that. That's a little overly mean anyway. 
Um, speaking of mean, the middle click thing works the same with, with this. So I'm thinking I need some more snakes in here. This is not quite crazy enough yet. You know what? Let's put in some for two player. So if it's two player, you get twice the snakes. Hooray! Snakes for everybody to shoot. That's good. Um, this little two player only checkbox here lets you uh, designate stuff that only happens in two player. And I realized I did that earlier with the pistol and didn't even mention it. So that's what that is. Um, Let's see, what else could I do to make this interesting? I think this this is pretty good. It's pretty pretty hectic, so let's give it a test. Alright. There go my snakes. Boy, and these mushrooms are all over the place. No, there's too many bullets. There's just too many bullets. They're uh, spawning on too frequent of a of a basis. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to going to have the frequency they do that. So we're going to make it every 20 seconds for this one. Every let's see, we'll make this one every 16 seconds before, at the start. This one every we'll say 14 seconds there, and this one every well, this one was kind of on both sides, isn't it? So, we'll just do 10 and 8, and eight there. Alright, bullets are now more scarce. That's more appropriate for survival horror-ish. Horror-ish. Survival suspense, I guess? <laughs> Bam. I'm out of bullets. Yeah, I'm really feeling the lack of bullets this time. And I'm not able to just go hide. On the side. Oh, dang. And I can't just let loose a stream of bullets into these guys. Oh. oh man. Getting low on health. Ooh, that was a lucky shot. They got popped out right into my bullet. Boom. Alright. Level complete. That's that's suitably intense for you know, the second boss fight um over in the swamp. I think that I think that works well. Now what I'll have to do is, uh, you know, make an exit condition, um, so that, uh, well, let's do that. Let's do that right now. Um, so basically, what I need to say is, um, I need a condition. There's a couple of different ones I could use. Um, the condition could be that there's zero enemies, or I could say that there are no eyeball snakes. Um, Let's just say that there's zero enemies. That's simple enough. Um, after boss complete, and so we'll say zero enemies as our condition. And um, we also want to say um, once only per play. You'll notice that when you have an active text box, the editor thing goes behind it. That's an unfortunate thing based on the Unity 3D engine and how this stuff layers. I wish there was something I could do about that, but unfortunately not. Um, <clears throat> so what I'm going to do now is make it so that we get a BG set. So that'll set the background. Um, I'll set it on 368, 368, and portal open. So, um, in order to properly link a couple of levels, though, um, what I have to do is uh, make it so there's some sort of literal connection between them. And we have a special thing called um, alternate entrance for that. And this does nothing except actually affect the link. And so what I want to do is make this 
link to the Ivanwood Marsh. So I come under here under level exits, and Ivanwood Marsh is level number five. This is level number 84. So now I need to find a place to hide the mar uh, hide the um, the new boss. And let's see, where would be a good spot to hide this? Ooh, I know where. I was thinking of where I was going to hide this the other day. Um, there's a guy down here. Yeah, this this guy. And uh, I can hit E to get into text edit mode, and I can see what he says. He says, go away, just leave me alone. It's kind of like, what's the point of this guy? I'd always, you know, wanted to have something here. <clears throat> but I hadn't uh, had really a reason to. So, um, believe it or not, this particular level has all of the sub subscreens filled up, so I can't make a second hidden screen, unfortunately, as much as I would like to. So, huh, what should I do? Let's see, if I look under portals and exits, I need to make a portal, basically. And I need to make it a portal open. Um, I guess this doesn't need to be too terribly secret. We'll just we'll just put it out there for the players to get attracted to. Go, oh, what's that? How do I get there? Um, let's see. This was level. I'm blind. It's probably right on the screen. There it is, 84. People watching are going, what are you doing? It's right there. Um, you know, I'll make this a required level. I was going to make this a bonus level, but I'm not going to. I'm going to just make it a required one. So what I'll do is I'll actually make a little path to this, carve out a little more space here, um, make this a little more scenic. That looks a little squared off right now, which I don't like. Uh, there we go. Alrighty. Now I need to have a marker for it. Those are also in here. So level marker, that's that thing that gives me my status. Oh, and I also need to set that this is the marker for level 84, otherwise it won't do anything. And... Now we need to set up a reward here. Uh, normally, I should state, normally if I wanted to have a portal in a level, I would just come in here and say portal, and I put this here, and when I test, you'll see, hey, where's that portal? Well, it wouldn't appear until the player actually uh, wins. Or if I wanted to have a marked portal, I could put that there, and oh, I can see the portal, but I can't go in it. That's, that's the kind where it's just marking where it is, but it doesn't open until you win. The win condition, however, is when all the grays are dead. There are no grays in this level, and the thing that I want to kill is the eyeball snakes. So in order to do that, I have to have um, a portal not appear that way, not a portal that's built in. And so that's why I'm using the alternate entrance, just to make the links between the levels. As you can see, uh, by the way, you can hold control and left click to go through screens like that. That's what I've been doing. Um, at any rate, and so then I'm scripting to make the uh, portal appear. That's something that's a little more complicated. That's something you really only have to have do um, when you are uh, when you're doing a boss fight or something else really special like this. This doesn't follow the normal rules of most levels. Um, so we've got it. So the portal's coming, but we don't have a reward. So the portal's coming on 368. Um, let's do this. Let's do, let's copy this. Let's say, paste, call this reward after boss complete zero enemies once only period. Not on, not once only per play, but just period once only. What that means is during your save game it will only happen the one time. And so we're going to do an FG add and we'll say 390, 395 seems good. 
and I need to look up the actual name of this thing. It's under tools, the life gem green pickup. All right, scripts again. Life gem green pickup. We're only gonna add one. And so then we're gonna say FG add if 2P, life, or hmm, 395, so we're gonna put this one on, put this one on 424, I guess. 424, life gem blue pickup. And so basically the blue life gems can only be used by player two anyway, and the green life gems are used by player one. So we don't need to confuse player one with having a blue life gem that they can't use if they're playing single player. Um, and so FG add if two player is helpful for that. Um, <clears throat> okay, so we've got reward after boss complete. That'll happen at the same time as after boss complete. Um, yeah, that works. If the player doesn't take the reward and they just leave, well, that stinks to be them. That happens in Zelda too, where if you leave that heart container there, you're just kind of, why'd you do that? You know, you left that on the table and it's your own darn fault if you run for the exit and don't claim your spoils of war. All right, so let's try this one more time. Yeah, it's too far away. Waste my bullets. You know, and these snakes move a lot faster on higher difficulties than testing this on cutthroat. You can, uh, in the, right in the level editor, you can choose what difficulty you want to test it on. <coughs> and uh, a lot of people who haven't played the game as long as I have tend to have a lot of difficulty. So, uh, you know, with fast moving stuff like this. So, um, you know, they, for the default difficulty, it seems about right to me. Ah, okay, FG add 395 life gem. So I can hit the tilde key to see the errors that I've got there. Life gem green pickup. Yeah, that would not be correct because green doesn't have three E's. You get to see my lovely, lovely typos. Life gem green pickup. Well, this gives me a chance to fix one other thing anyway. <clears throat> I'm going to do a preload script here. Um, this is going to be called... Um, basic preload data. Preload scripts happen right at the start of a um, when a sub-level is loaded. A sub-level is a screen and uh, so not when the level itself is loaded but when you go onto that particular screen. Here they're one of the same because it's a one, one screen level. Um, but at any rate preload makes it happen before the actual action starts which is can be useful. And there is a special command here which is it's preload only and it's skip portal sound so don't play the portal sound in this sub level when all enemies are killed and really what that means is all grays are killed or the first non-gray enemy so in this case every time I was killing that first eyeball snake uh, eyeball snake eye it was playing that stupid skip, uh, portal sound which had no relevance here so skip portal sound and that corrects that because normally you want that but sometimes you don't and uh, you know almost always you want that but uh, this is one of the exceptions so there's a scripting command that lets us turn that off because this is not the only level that's that sort of exception so you'll notice when I shoot this guy no little diddly noise <laughs> Should probably be narrating or something, but it's taking concentration to do this. <laughs> Out of bullets again. Oy. Let's 
still had some bullets. Ah. Got him. All right, so now I've won. And so my reward has shown up, uh, which is the green life gem, so I get some more life. The bullets are still showing up. And the portal's here. If I take the portal, oh, that doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't work. All right, so what I'm going to do, we want to test this more quickly. This is kind of frustrating watching me play this, like, repeatedly, right? So we're going to go to Meso Creatures here. Um, and we will put a something small and straightforward. Uh, we'll just put a little insect here. We'll put a giant louse. Um, so we're going to get rid of those two eyeball snakes. We've got a giant louse. This is an easy way for us to test the ending conditions. Um, the other thing is I wanted to give a different, um, a second uh, reward here, which is under the keys and maps, the paper red star pickup. So yeah, paper red star pickup. Oops, I'm going to have to do this separately. Um, paper, red, star, pickup. And I'm going to put that at 435. Okay, the reason I'm putting this into its own little script is because I want it to be um, happening every time in case the player doesn't pick it up. Picking the um, paper up repeatedly doesn't actually do anything because you get to keep it forever once you have it. So any extra duplicate copies is pointless. So there's no reason to restrict that. If there is some player that for some reason doesn't pick it up before leaving, we don't want them to be, you know, completely unable to use this forevermore. So may as well give it to them every time. The, you know, life bonus, that's a different thing. If you don't, you know, we don't want you picking that up every time because it adds to your life every time. And uh, if you miss it, that's nothing we can really do about that. Um, now, the other problem was that um, after boss complete, we got BG set 368 portal open. So we created a portal, but it didn't go anywhere. So we need to go in and fix that. Um, under commands anytime, we can look in here. Uh, Obviously, it supports mouse scroll and all that. Um, let's see, it was like set. BG exit, that's what it is. BG exit, level, and then the level number. Okay. So, BG. BG exit level. I think it's probably BG exit 368. Let's see. I shouldn't have closed it. You can just put it right behind there, so there's no reason to really close it. Um, BG exit arguments tile number level level number. Okay. BG exit level and. I think that's 008. We'll check. 005. Okay, so now that we have a portal there, we're assigning it to actually go somewhere. <laughs> um, hey, I'll be merry for once. So we've got this stupid giant mouse there. He's like a really weak, you know, very easy enemy. This just lets me test the ending conditions without having to fight the giant eyeball snake repeatedly. <laughs> Um, alrighty, and we're back. I made a silly mistake in uh, setting a count of 495, and that caused some craziness. Um, a count of that on the uh, the red paper, the red star paper. So, red star paper now goes in my rare items list, and all is well. And I can exit the level, and I come right back out. Um, whoopsies. Hmm, that's not good. I come right back out where 
where I should. Now I also notice this other entrance thing is where I'm appearing, so I'm going to have to change that. Let's put that over here, and put some water around it, and then link this to 005. That'll be nicer. Now the other thing is this portal's tucked away in the corner here in such a manner that it's rather difficult to get out of. And there's bees right next to it, so I'm going to move the bees a little bit and um, move a little bit of the water and all that stuff. So this way the portal is not quite so difficult to get through. So let's test this again. Actually, yeah, let's, let's test it. Well, okay, that's fine. There's the guy. Looks like he might fall in the hole himself. He did. All right. So we come back out, and here I am. It's easy enough. Go back through, and it's still remembering me there. That's a great thing to exam uh, that I can show is that uh, when you change the links between two levels, make sure and change it on both sides or um, it won't quite update right. Um, the links are unidirectional and so that's important. So now I appear down here um, and I can move around. And I do all that stuff and I come back out and hooray. <clears throat> now, a um, few things I've not done on this level. First of all, um, let's put in back the two eyeball snakes. I haven't set any weather. I haven't set really the lighting for under the roofs. Let's make the lighting under the roofs, you know, creepier. Let's make it uh, dimmer. And let's put some grass coming into here to make it look all, you know, kind of yuck. And let's put a little bit of, you know, shallow water in there even. Um, yeah, that looks good. And um, music. Let's find something. So we can hit test sound, and this lets us do music, ambient sound effects, etc., etc. So let's say, but maybe crickets. Yeah. Um, weather. Let's have light rain. Um, That'll have the visuals of light rain as well once we go in here. Um, it's probably difficult to see on YouTube, but there it is. And let's test sound again. And let's choose some, well, usually we do the boss music for the boss fights. So, but in this case, maybe we can do Marsh. It's a little more down tempo and creepy. Yeah, I think that works. Um, so, we've done all of that. Is there anything else that we want to do here? So I'll show you what the light under the roof has accomplished, changing that. Hmm, much moodier. That's good. This whole thing seems a lot moodier there. Um... Should also make it. Let's do this. Let's make it so that we've got um, male player NPC down there, and we've got female player NPC down there, and we will put some no enemy tags here, which keeps both NPCs and enemies from crossing that line. And this way, whoever is, uh, if you're playing solo, whichever player, whichever character you're not, will appear and will wander around. So I'm playing as Mary, and you know, Darrell is wandering around there. And um, actually that's pretty annoying with him wandering in the uh, in the water. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put no enemy flags directly on both of them, which means that whichever one I'm not will just stand there. Stop walking in the water, Darrell, that's annoying. <laughs> um, so now he's kind of watching me and looking around. And if I gave him some text, then I could talk to him. You need to assign the text to both Mary and Darrell if you want either one to be able to initiate the conversation, depending on which player is, uh, which character they've chosen. Um, yeah, that looks like a 
Looks like a boss level to me. Think we're done. Alrighty, thanks for watching, and I hope that this gives you some great ideas for levels that you can make. Um, you can use all these tools to make your entire own adventures uh, as big as what we've created, uh, or even bigger. And uh, we hope you have a lot of fun with it. Thanks.